It was always a blast spending the day out on the ice with the guys, lacing up the skates, maneuvering through the defense and seeing the look on the goaltender's face when I would do a double move right between his legs, scoring the game-winning goal. The crispy winter air, the smell of firewood burning in the distance, a residential lake freezing over, all so magical. Hockey wasn't just a hobby, a pastime, or even a game for that matter. It was a way of life. Our group would always play when the ice froze the lakes and ponds over the winter time, and we would really hit the streets hard in the summer playing roller hockey. We'd always watch NHL games and the Olympics whenever we could, and we would always give each other pointers and techniques to improve our skills. Of course. The never-ending debates about who was the greatest of all time and who was going to hoist Lloyd Stanley's cup that specific year, along with the ongoing competitions of who could collect the most prestigious memorabilia and who had the best collection of jerseys. A friendly battleground, but a battleground nonetheless. That all came to a head on one fateful day, one winner, one which I or any of those guys will ever forget. There had always been an old urban legend floating around our town about a kid who had fallen through the ice after repeatedly hitting his goalie stick against the ice and breaking it after a player of the opposing team had scored a hat-trick on him, and supposedly it was the fifth one against him overall for that match, and drowned shortly after. It said that whenever someone would score a hat-trick, the ice would fall through and the guy would drown mysteriously, even though the ice wasn't thin at that time. It had happened so many times that the authorities had to close the lake down, along with the stigma of the place being jinxed, running around rampant through the town. Our parents strictly forbade us from ever visiting the location, let alone playing an actual game there. Still, the allure and the mystery and the danger drew all of us right in. We quietly planned to make a day trip to the lake one day, and to play a good solid game or two. We made our way out early, cutting through a few different parks to stay off the road so no one would suspect anything. After going onto this trail that was about 150 yards long, we made it. The trees and the vegetation were relatively thick around the small lake, even though it was winter and leaves had already all died off. Though there were a few evergreens in the vicinity of the lake, which was nice because it helped to conceal the location from anyone with prying eyes. It was hardly daybreak when we got out there. Nice, cool, crisp. Everyone laces up and gets down to business. Opening face off and the pure mayhem commences. Pure pandemonium. The forwards and the defensemen scramble for possession. It's knocked back into the defensive zone. Kyle recovers it around the right side. I slide in slowly with a patient forecheck. Kyle manages to slip the pass by me, but not before Steve steps in front of Rich, intercepting the pass. He taps it to me. I shoot. Pad saved by Ross. It bounces back to the right, and Kyle and I duel for possession. Rich ventures over and clears it out of the zone. I head through the neutral zone and into our defensive zone. Xander handles it around the next the net with Clint right on his tail. Not able to get a shot away, Xander attempts to maneuver around the net, but is taken down by Clint, who makes an incredible pass up the ice to me. Kyle slips up and balls, and Rich is caught with his pants down as he was more attentive to Craig. I fly through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone. Ross comes out of his crease, challenging me. I go left, then right. I fake to the left and make a, gu- a surprise shot right through his legs. Score. Ross shakes his head, rolling his eyes. My teammates huddle up, congratulating me in a brief celebration. 
We play three straight 20 minute periods with five to 10 minute breaks in between. All thanks to Rich's obnoxious little stopwatch. I scored once more in the second and Leo and Dave scored both scored in the third to make it a 2-2 tie going into the overtime. The guys hydrate and we start things off. Several minutes go by and nothing go going but several zone clears. Then we get a good offensive possession. Kyle and Rich try to clear, but our trusty blue liners, Clint and Zach, keep it in. Craig ventures behind the net with Rich hot on it. I slip between a small window between Kyle and Xander. Craig sees the kink in the centers and centers it right to me. I rip one right to the net on Ross on his glove side high. Score. Victory. Game over. A mixture of cheers and groans flood the ice. Lucky, scoffed Rich. <laughs> you wish. That's not the bit skill, my man, I thundered triumphantly. You ain't got no skill, laughed Leo. That's not what your girlfriend was set. Just at that moment, at the moment of my joke, I felt a sudden sickness, as though my stomach was going to explode. I want to puke, but I can't. The guys will give me space, all looking concerned. Bro, are you... A sharp pain runs through my body. I shake, I quiver, I convulse. I try to scream, I open my mouth, but no sound comes out. I try so hard to express the pain, but all I can do is wince my face and open my mouth. I have no control. All I can do is wince in pain. Then the ice gives in. Out from underneath me, I fall in. Sharp, splintering pains run, runs across my, every single inch of my body. I try to keep my mouth closed, but the pain is too great. Open, letting out a muted yell. Still just conscious enough to only let the water flow outward and not inward. I, I, I see something. Down in the water with me. It's a figure about the same height and weight as me. Masked. The pain reaches its hints of desperation. Trillions upon trillions of razors and pen pricks. The figure grabs me, opens my mouth, and all hell pours down my throat into my mouth and down my trachea. After a few seconds, I black out. I start to flit, fade slowly back into reality. Slowly. Also slowly. I start to hear the beeping of machines. Along with a couple of voices and a, I feel oxygen running into my lungs. One of the paramedics leans in. All right, he's coming around. My eyes fully open. I'm in the back of an ambulance. Take it easy. You just barely made it. I raise my thumb, and he smiles. You're quite the fighter, he says. Rest easy. We'll be at the hospital shortly. He leaves, but behind where he once sat, a figure dressed in a hockey gear is standing. Dead silent. All black jersey. Holy pads with one of those old white goalie masks from the 70s and 80s with the holes. The texture of the jersey was as if it was soaked with several shards of ice. Then to my horror, the figure removes the mask, revealing a cold, motionless face. Pale, almost a blue tint to the skin. The eyes peer out at me, cold, lifeless and yet with a very slight sense of bitter anger and sadness. He steps toward me, getting closer, until he starts standing right over me. He then proceeds to touch my arm with a single finger. I feel a sudden chill run through my body. Not too harsh at first, but it begins to intensify. Then, I notice that the skin is actually starting to turn into ice. My 
insides begin to feel solid as well. I, I can't feel my arm. I start to panic. The mi machines begin to sound the alarm if one of the paramedics comes to my side. I look over and the phantom is gone, and so is the numbing pain of being frozen alive. For now, at least. Uh, just relax, you're alright. I take the advice and doze off. I awake in a hospital room. My parents and my good friend Jessica are at my side. <laughs> What's up, Gretzky? She smiled. I return the smile. So just exactly were you fellows doing there? My father asked. Hockey. I said, smiling in a low voice, barely above a whisper. Of course. He said in an annoyed, yet slightly amused tone. I know that you boys don't really take supernatural things too seriously, but there's a reason why the place is off limits to the public, lamented my mother. I believe it, I said softly. Jessica smiled. Well, no more funny business for right now, all right? The doctors want you to take it nice and easy for a while, my dad said. All good. I can just practice in the garage and watch the boys on the sidelines. I need to start paying attention to my guitar playing more anyway, among other things, I replied. You gave us quite a scare, grinned Jessica. You know me? I returned the grin. Ah, Jessica. Her and I went all the way back to kindergarten. We have been great friends since we were small, but now the friendship was starting to blossom into something more. An undeniable physical attraction was starting to develop between us. She was starting to turn into a gorgeous Italian goddess. Ugh. Dark hair, tan skin, nice full figure, incredible toned legs, the works. And the fact that she was one of the sweetest people and down-to-earth people on the face of the planet didn't hurt either she could cook like no one's business. Gorgeous singing voice, too. Ah, what a chick. Her and my parents stayed, said their goodbyes when it started to get late, and I dozed off. I had a dream of the masked figure at the lake just staring at me for a few seconds. Then I awoke. Still, there was a chill that seemed to linger in the room. Subtle. But it was still there. This wasn't over. A week went by and I was finally released from the hospital. I was offered a hero's welcome both at home, school, and along with the boys. Jessica even cooked me my favorite shrimp scampi. Things went by slowly but surely. I was still able to watch the guys from time to time and I was able to spend more time with Jessica. Everything seemed to be getting back to normal. I was sitting in my living room, watching the kings play the ducks. Suddenly, I thought that I could make out damn footsteps coming from behind me. I slowly turned my head in that direction, and nothing was there. Nothing. No one tracks. Nobody. I spent a few seconds looking around the room, checking all of the doors and windows. I head back to the couch and sit and get settled back in. A few minutes pass by, and I begin to get that cold, freezing, chill feeling again. I start to get goosebumps, and the hair stands up on the back of my neck. Someone is in here with me. I feel the intent gaze of eyes on me. I slowly turn my head around again, and still nothing. I start to shiver. I can now see my breath. I hear a creak behind me. I refuse to turn around. I start to shake. My body starts to freeze. Ice sickles, sickles begin growing on my body. I'm being frozen alive. Then, something suddenly flies from behind and crashes into the TV set, turning the room completely black. Dark, cold, a horrifying combination, taking, taken into the frozen center of hell. 
I hear the yelling of my parents upstairs. A few lights come on along with the living room light, revealing one of the skates stuck into the busted screen of the TV. I breathe a sigh of relief. What the hell happened? asked my father. I... I don't know. I go on to gather myself and explain exactly what happened. My old man just sighs, shaking his head. My mom takes a seat next to me on the couch. This is more serious than I first thought. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. I wake the next morning to hear this to the sound of sirens of ambulances and fire trucks. Wondering the cause of the commotion, I venture outside and follow. We're heading down towards our lake. I sprint down there as fast as I can, trying to hear the cries and screams of God, the families of the guys. I finally make it to the location. The place was already broken off by the police. I go off to the side, slip by unnoticed. I make it to the lake and to my complete horror. I see a sight that I'll never forget. It was the dead, frozen bodies of all the guys. It's almost as if they had all been pulled through the ice to the waist, deep, and then were all frozen in place. Their skin a pale, icy color, almost blue from being frozen overnight. The agony and the pain still fresh on all of their faces. Empty shells of their former selves. My heart sinks. I slump down next to a tree, shaking my head. Why? Why? Across the lake, I see the masked figure. He makes a slashing motion with his hand going across his throat. You bastard. I mutter lowly. He slowly vanishes. I sit alone, shaking my head, feeling like I had just lost everything. After an entire week of attending multiple funerals, I could somewhat breathe, but not really. Jessica tries to cheer me up, with some success. One Saturday night, she invites me for a skate at the rink, dinner at her house, and a nice little walk. She cooks an incredible chicken lo mein and General Tso's entree. Afterwards, we go for a nice little skate in the rink downtown. You're still tense, she said. I know. It's all, it's all just been a lot to deal with, that's all. I know it is, hon. It's always terrible to lose people who you care about and love. You're a strong man and everything will get better for you from here on out. You just gotta put your best foot forward and take it just one day at a time. I know. It just hurts like hell. I've known those guys for years. They're almost like brothers to me. Love heals all the wounds with time, babe. She said softly. Our eyes meet. And it's almost as if it's for the first time. We truly see each other. Our lips meet. Perfection. We shoot a mutual smile at each other and continue. The snow flurry showers over the area. Let's warm up a bit, she smiles. I smile back. We head back to her house. She has an indoor jacuzzi. We were gonna chill in there for a bit. We give each other another kiss and head over our, to our respective little uh, queen changing rooms. If only her parents weren't home, or I sigh to myself. Eh, our time will come. I change and wait for Jessica to get situated. She always looks amazing in a bikini, and I'm steaming with an anticipation. But. Something is off. She never takes this long, usually. Adam? I think 
someone is in here with me. What? It got cold all of a sudden. I feel like someone is watching me in here. Hold on. I grabbed the door handle. Frozen solid. So cold that it actually burns my palm. Jess screams. Something just cut me. I bust against the door. Another scream. Help me! I bust against it again. And again. Still solid. She screams again. This time more intensely. Baby, help me! Oh, fuck no. I think to myself. Not on my watch. That sick little fuck isn't going to cut up the woman that I love. Practically right in front of me, too. Another scream, higher and louder. I back up several feet. Another scream. Her parents come up, shouting from the stairs. I brace and charge for the door. Success, I bust down the door. She's huddled down in the fetal position on the floor, several cuts going down the body, some of them almost a foot long. I grab her and kiss her on the forehead. The police and the ambulance are called. Jess and her family head to the hospital and I head home after everything calms down. I make it back to my house only to find that little shit rag standing in my garage with the door open, holding a blood-stained hockey skate in his hand. You fucking dead, I mutter. He grabs one of my hockey sticks, my favorite one, and tosses it out into the driveway towards me. He slowly disappears. Challenge accepted. I head to the forbidden lake, gear in hand, and everything. I show, and guess who's waiting. I lace up my skates, slip on my gloves, drop the puck on the ice, and stare down my nemesis. The ice cracks slightly. We stare each other down. I move in left, right. I to a sudden go into a sudden circle with a backhand shot. Shoulder save. He brushes the puck back at, to me. The ice cracks a little more. I take it back out. I charge right back in. Right, left, right, left. Right between the legs. Score. That's one. My opponent brushes the pack out to me. I head out and back in. Right, left. Sudden wrist shot to the high glove side. Score. My opponent slams his goalie stick against the ice. I snicker. I head right back in. Once my enemy is ready again. Right, left, right, left. I get right to the goal crease. Fake to the left, draw the puck backwards slightly, and shoot to the right glove side. The asshole makes a glove save. Hell of a save, too. The cry ice cracks even further, damn near breaking altogether. One more. My foe takes off his mask and stares directly at me. I nod. He puts his mask back on. I slowly head in, taking my time ever so slightly. I suddenly rip a wicked slap shot toward the stick side. Score! Victory! Triumph! Yes! The ice around the net gives way in, and my opponent falls in once again. I pump my fist. As I cautiously hold over to the head over to the opening in the ice, I catch one final glimpse of the mask sinking into the lake. Game over, I whisper. <laughs>